Avela su betisporet, page 14b, two lines from the very bottom of the page. We're going to deal today with, good morning, with Ilchot uh, Avelut, um, but not only. We're going to deal today with a, a law of mourners. It's a list of um, points involved with mourning. But also, we'll deal with others, like Metzorah and Menudein. It's in the, the case because we discussed already the Ilchot um, Moed, the law involved with intermediate days of festivals. So now we go to the next step, which is understanding the, the point of um, mourners and mourning period, etc., etc. It's very important to know the um, mindset in Judaism in that sense is very different than many other religions. Um, here the Gemara begins with the statement that the mourner is prohibited uh, for, um, to do a haircut and soon you see the sources. So when I studied this I was thinking about uh, Sikhism. There is a religion I don't know how much people in this country are familiar, but it's one of the eight largest uh, world religions. If you count together all the world religions, it's about eight, nine religions. <coughs> and Sikhism, S-I-K, it's a, re- it's a very big religion, but I don't know how... If you go to Washington, D.C., you see uh, those people wearing a high turban and cover the hair, both men and women, that's Sikh. So why I'm telling you that? It's the source of the Sikhism is a story of uh, 15th century, 1469. Uh, according to their tradition, it was a Guru Nana that was a, um, a fellow that was a half a Hindu and half Muslim, and he um, invented that religion. And they said that um, um, he left ten disciples, the idea of Sikh, Sikh is the um, point in Hindu. He was in North India. Is the uh, Sikh is the disciple, a student, and he left ten students. is a long story about his life. But the key is one of the five keys they have in their religion. The side of the sword is not cutting hair. They give a tremendous respect to a hair. So if you go and see, sometimes even ladies not um, shaving mustache. Did you ever see that? Mm-hmm. Or you see a, a ladies or men even cover the hair in such a uh, respect. Uh, they respect their point of hair tremendously. So you see, it's um, in many religions the idea of hair carries um, something. By us, it's not so much the hair, it's the idea that um, when a person is in a state of mourning, and he should not uh, have um, the pleasure, or whatever you call it, of haircut. So um, they said here, Avela su betisporet, a mourner cannot do it. But the the sources, because the Torah said in Leviticus chapter 10 that God talked to the sons of Aharon when they are um, 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 mourn over the lost of the two brothers, uh, the story is in the book of Vayikrai, Leviticus, Parashat Shmini, I think it's page chapter 10. They said there that um, fire came from heaven and consumed the two sons, Nadav and Abihu. It's many, many interpretations. You can see in my book, Table Talk, I listed, I think, at least 10 interpretations why fire came from heaven and consume them, especially those coming there that said it came from their no- nostrils. What's the reason? Is their scene? Is the other scene? It's involved with intoxication. What exactly happened? Etc. But the key is, while the two brothers mourn over the loss of the other two, since Aharon, Aaron, the, the high, first high priest, had four sons, the Torah said, Rasheichem al tifrau. Let not the hair of your head be, go loose. So it means that you do not need to have a long hair, but you allow to do a haircut. So you derive from that, Michlal, the Chule Alma, Asu. 
that everyone else, which is someone who's non Kohen, non priest, he uh, um, uh, prohibited. Um, so Rashi explained to us that it's because they are a part of the celebration, the inauguration of the tabernacle. So that was the reason they um, here for sure. Uh, there is much more to discuss uh, what's the difference between their circumstance and regular mourner. But as we said, via negativa, we derive from that that the mourner cannot do a haircut at the first period um, of the morning. Page 15. Menudim un ma betisporet. How about those people who are ostracized or lepers? Again, that was the time that people they are, have the capability. Biblical time, we read about it. Later, Talmudic time, it was ostracism against certain people that disobeyed. Tashma, men adimum tzoraim asule lesaper ulechabes. We try to juxtapose the mourner to the others. So we said, men udeshemet, bedin suklim betarono. If someone who's um, ostracized, for example, he denigrates um, the bet din, he mocked the leadership, etc., he opposed uh, and they bet didn't uh, warn him, etc., and they ostracized him, etc., and they never asked for forgiveness, the Ritva explained. So they want to teach everyone the proper behavior, so they stone his, um, his coffin. It's not that they um, stone him, but they put a, a bunch, a pile of stones mm -hmm. at the top of his. Um, it's a well known story in the book of Joshua. They uh, um, went around the city of Jericho, the circle seven times, they blow the shofar, and the walls um, uh, fall. So they, they, um, uh, one of the warnings was not to touch the loot, the leftover of the city. There was one fellow who was a trader, he touched the, uh, that, and people start um, um, uh, getting killed in the eye in the next city, and God um, listened to Joshua's prayer, and he told him that someone was a trader, and they made a big lottery. And eventually they get him, which his name is Achan, which, by the way, according to our tradition, the second part of Falenu Le Shabbat, Al Kene Kaveh is the abbreviation mm -hmm. of his name, which is the fellow that uh, basically expressed his remorse before he was stoned. But basically, they said here that uh, on 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 his grave, because he Maal uh, Bacherem, he betrayed against the rules not to touch the leftover, so they put him in and they put a pile of stones. So basically we derive from that that anyone who is ostracized and dies while in his period of ostracism uh, without seeking to be released from it and, and forgiveness, so they, they do that with his coffin. There is a book called Emek uh, Bracha that he explained two pshatim, two avenues. He said in the Masechet Smachot, they said, it's not really skila, it's not really stoning. It's a gather skila. Mm -hmm. It appears like that because they put stones on, on his grave. Um, and the Rambam said it's only midin bizayon, it's only act of um, denigration, um, just act for us, for the living, to know not to follow it. So, as we said, there's a list of about 10 ruling involved with mourners. First we talk about the haircut, now we go to the second one. Avel chayav ba'atifat arosh. A mourner is obligated to wrap his head as a sign of mourning. That's not something that we practice. Um, in reality, um, um, is the whole, as we said, that um, there are things applied to um, uh, those days, there are things that we do in nowadays. So, for example, the idea of stoning, we said that it was because to teach us, the living, not to follow that path. Here, when it's come to wrapping the head, it's a, a source from Ezekiel, but the only people that I know that do, does that is the Yemenite, the Temanim. They do that. It's an act of mourning. Mm -hmm. The soul is that uh, God said to Ezekiel, who was a, a Kohen, said in Ezekiel chapter 24, So it means that everyone else has the obligation to wrap the head. 
Menudem Mao but if Adarosh seems to talk about Mona, we always juxtapose to the other two, which is the ostracized person and Metzorah and the leper. So he said, ostracized, Amar Rav Yosef Tashma, we learn Tani, page 14, and then we define the Roshim Kimudim, and Chavalim, and Chavalim, and Chavalim, and Chavalim. So those people who are ostracized, so, um, uh, in other words, imagine those, those years. They have no rain in Israel. So they will go to a period of 13 fast days. So they feel like God ostracized them, okay? So therefore, they sit and, and they um, act like a mourner until God has compassion on them and bring water. You may go in a different direction when it's come to someone who ostracized by heaven, like that group of people that did not uh, have a rain because that's who we treated much stringent, um, uh, etc. How about leper? So we see here for the leper, the Torah said in the Bilkus 13 that you have to have this, this wrapping the head. How about uh, uh, tefillin? Now we go to number three. We talk so far about cutting hair and talk about uh, what else? Wrapping the head. Now number three, Avel Asur Laniach Tefillin. So the mourner um, uh, cannot put a feeling. Later in page 21, we go to details how far we go with that. With the Kamar Rachman Ali Chizkel, when the God said to Ezekiel in chapter 24, Pe'ercha Chavosh Alecha, your glory, your beauty put upon you, which means that we have Tefillin, we're in Tefillin, Michlal Dechu Le'alma Asur. Derived from that, that everyone else should not put the feeling. So the Ritva asked the question, how come we just said that the mourner cannot put the feeling at the first period, you know, like the Onen period, the first day, but why not the entire seven days, entire Shiva? So the Ritva said, and I'm just reading his word, he said, and no bedin lifrok me'alav or malchut shamayim kol Shiva, which means the, the, the feeling is also act of accepting the yoke, the, the burden of God, in a sense, they subjugate yourself to Hashem. And therefore, this is something they cannot do the other way around, to remove that from himself. How about the ostracized person? So they left it with a teiku, which means that um, even Shulchan Ochor Achaim said that it's a, um, um, he cannot put the feeling but there are those who say that he can, so they left it in the take in un, unresolved. How about leper? Tashma, the Hatsa, what the Torah said in Leviticus 13. One was a leper, Lerabot Kohen Gadol. To uh, speak about the high priest that Gadav Yu Pumin, Shiyu Mekoraim, the Rosho Yeparua and Priyal Yusa, that his garment should be terror, which means that um, it's all act of a leper, and, and pri'ay agdu se'ar, which means the hair, Rabbi Rabbi as I said, it, 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 growing hair. Rabbi Kiva Omer, Nemra Lashon Abaya Barosh, Nemra Abaya Babege. Ma Abaya Mura Babege Dal Dabar Shu, Shu Chutz Migufo, Af Abaya Barosh, Al Dabar Chutz Migufo. So it means that something that's out of his body, my love at Filin, Amar Rav Papa, Lo Akumta Vesudra. What does that mean, Akumta Vesudra? So here, I'm using my book, Rashi here explained, So, the Abnei Shaish explained that sometimes if someone just read it as he is, he may think that they, they put it on the top of his um, uh, cap or scarf. Um, but that basically is like not putting the feeling at all. So, you want to say that he does put the feeling but not um, not akumta vesudra. Um, the Aruch said that um, um, that it was in those days a special hair um, a, a scalp that they put at the top of the head. So, uh, so those um, it's possible to explain that according to Rabbi Akiva, it's prohibited for a leper to wear such a, a headwear because it is a excessive adornment. Now. Um, <coughs> N number four. Number four is Avel Asur Bish'ilat Shalom. The mourner 
cannot uh, greet other with uh, shalom, with peace. So later you see a disputation about it. Um, what is applied? It's um, it's applied um, that he should not greet other, others should not greet him. What exactly uh, involved? The old day in Shin Pei said that it's not applicable to our days. Um, mm. The Rama said. Um, um, there are those who say that uh, um, it partially applies to, to a mourner. But uh, the source is the Amar Le Rahman Ali Chizkel, again, Ezekiel 24, He Anek Dom. So Rashi explained to us, Klomar Bedavar Zetino Gavelut Sheti Dom. So, um, there is a difference here, I explained it at length, um, the difference between Shilat Shalom and Heanek Dom. One way is the just the act of silence, versus um, if you're really greeting a person involved with a conversation. Um, it's a big discussion how do you derive from Ezekiel what exactly applies to Ezekiel himself and what applies to, to everyone else. In general, there is a, a concept. The, the rabbis explained to us that there are certain things applied solely for Ezekiel, certain things applies to everyone else. So anything that is kulot, anything that is leniencies, that's applied only to him. Anything that is humrot, that's the ritva said, that anything that is stringencies, it's not just for the for Ezekiel himself, but it's a rule for everyone else. Anyway, menudem ma'u b'shilat shalom. Someone who's ostracized, can he greet other people? Amar Yosef Tashma. B'shilat shalom ben adam lachaviro, kibne adam zulufim lamakom. The Gemara said in Ta'anit, page 12, there is a um, famine in Israel. There's no rain, and they fast for 13 days. So they, that stage, they treated each other as ostracized. It's like God is angry at them. So in, uh, one of the act is the, the manner of greeting each other. It's different than the manner. It's like Tisha B'Av. How you don't compare someone who ostracized by heaven to someone who ostracized by the rabbinic court. Someone who ostracized by heaven, even as, as a public, as a group, as a tzibur, so we, we treated much stringent. Metzora Masher Beshelat Shalom. How about a leper? Can he agree? It's Tashma. The Torah said in Leviticus 13, Ve'al Safam Ya'ateh. Ve'al Safam Ya'ateh, meaning, and he shall cover his upper lip. What does that mean? She Yusuf Totav Medubakot Zo Bezo. It's almost like. Uh, expression of um, euphemism, that his lips should be stuck together. That he should be like one who is ostracized and one who is like a mourner. And he's prohibited from greeting others or being greeted. So that's the final point. So maybe the same applied to someone who's ostracized. Again, the Torah says in Leviticus 13, So you see here, an Avel in Metzora, it's uh, prohibited from Shilat Shalom, from greeting. Menudeh, exercise left in the Safek. Um, not clear, the Rabbeinu Asher, the Rosh said, so that the menude, that ostracized person can speak, um, um, uh, the only question is the shi'ilat shalom itself. Anyway, number five. Number five is, avel asur la'asok bedivrei Torah. A mourner is prohibited from study Torah. Why? Because they said in Ezekiel 24, God said to him, sight in silence. So silence means be display equanimity. Um, Tosfot explained um, that it's not only from greeting, from shilat shalom, but also from study Torah. Menudem, how about a person who ostracized? Amar of Yosef Tashma menude shone ve So he said that ostracized person can study and others study to him. So they said that uh, Ritva explained that they have to be 
a distance of four cubits from him. That's based on the Gemara in Sanhedrin, page 68. Niskal veniskalimlo. So uh, he can um, um, hire and hire him. Muhram lo shonev lo shonimlo lo niskal velo skalimlo. Aval shonev lo otzmo, he can study silently for himself. Shelo yafsik elimudo, in order not to stop his study, or shelo yafsid, according to the reef. And Vosselo Chanuk Tana Bishvil Panasato, he should make for himself a small store just to have basic survival of living. Vamarav, Zabun Emai Befikta Daravot. For example, he can uh, sell water in a valley of Aravot. Aravot is the name of a place. So the point is, um, according to Rashi, etc., it's just a very, very basic living. The Ritva disagree. The Ritva said that it's a, the Aravot was a place in a great need of water, and he carries most probably those things that um, can sell water to those people. Nowadays, you see that they are selling it as a small bottles, etc. And they are selling uh, water for for money. But um, so Ritva said not only water, but the Kol Shikin Sharmelachim, even though other type of work. And Bet Yosef disagree, and Siman Shin Lamedalet hold the other way around. So again, it's a two different school of thought. One is the Ritva that said that he can do any work. Others say that uh, that's just very basic work. Tashma Mina, Metzora, Mao Bidivari Torah, how about study Torah by the leper? Tashma, the Torah said in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Vodatam Levanecha Vlivne Vanecha, you should teach the word of Torah to your children and future generation. Yom Asher Matre Fne Hashem Lokecha Bechorev. The day that you stand before the Lord of God in a place called Horeb. Male Alan, same way as the receiving Torah at the time of revelation from Mount Sinai. Be'emau v'ira u'beretet u'bezi'ah. It was in the great awe and reverence. Afkan be'emau v'ira u'beretet u'bezi'ah. Which means that they have to study in a great reverence. Mikan amru, from here they drive. Hazavin v'am tzora'in u'bo'ale nidot. All those people, such as um, Zavin, the people who have a discharge or Metzoraim, uh, lepers, or those who have intercourse with menstruation women. They can study Torah and all different uh, form of oral Torah. However, those people who have a discharge, in, um, especially intentional, um, uh, it's, uh, they are rendering um, ritual impurity. Rashi explained that the um, natural impurity it's not lost tirala Torah, it's not contradicted the Torah. Balkeri that was intention or if it happens um, in a such a way, so that, that's basically contradicted the Torah and he must duck himself in a ritual bath, in a mikveh and that's the only one who a way of purifying him, Shema Mina. So the Ritva said you ask a question, how about Boel Nida? You're going to tell me that someone who's intentionally have a relation with a um, woman at her period. Um, so he said, no, it applies. What the Gemara said here, Rakbo and Musim, those who suddenly at the middle of their relation, they have sudden situation, unexpected. So it, again, it's one unwittedly a situation. Then they can study to one. Not those who do it intentionally, then they are prohibited before they duck themselves in a mikveh and regret it. Um, Rashi, here in Kitvei Yad, in the very um, bottom, said something very interesting. Rashi said, Even though it's said that um, even a person have a moment of, um, uh, how do you say, lightning in his brain, in other words, uh, imagine a person that was in the middle of uh, whatever cocktail or party or whatever, and he, he was a little bit uh, off or high, or whatever you call it, and he has such a relation that prohibited, and then suddenly he is sober and he realized that he um, is in a big violation, etc. So he regretted, it, and he have now in the month of Elul, so he have the, the spirit of Teshuvah uh, after the sins. So therefore, since Rashi said Libo, Libo in his heart of heart is regretting that, so therefore he already paved the way that he can study Torah.
So you see here, again, Kitviyad in Rashi is a different category. Number six. Number six is Avera Subetich Boset. A mourner cannot do, uh, cannot wear a laundry, uh, something that um, um, fresh um, laundry uh, clothes. So, the, so the, the seven days period is called Shiva. Person cannot do, um, if he lost his loved one, um, cannot do laundry. It's a big question what's involved laundry. Does that mean uh, laundry at all or using a certain materials? And water itself, it's fine. Um, um, the Tosfot uh, explained later in page 24 that, um, that it's only uh, laundry itself. Um, there are those who say that he cannot uh, uh, wear something that is already fresh um, and dry clean. There are those who said that it's, uh, it is fine. But in general, the um, very broader understanding is the Nekod Shulchan Aruch in Yorede Ashin Pei 389. They said that it is applied to seven days period, and the, the source for that is the Khtiv. They said in the book of Samuel, chapter 14, Vaishlach Yoav Tekoa, Vaikach Misham Ishach Achama. It was a time that um, King David was very uh, strong in his view. Um, um, it was the um, story of Amnon and Tamar. The uh, idea that Amnon seduced Tamar, which was a half sister, and he raped her. And as a result, uh, the other uh, half brother, Absalom, who is the son of David from different wife, went ahead and gets angry and killed him. And um, King David was so furious at his son of Shalom for killing Amnon, so he basically um, exiled Absalom. And um, Yoav, who is the uh, minister of um, defense or, or, or a chief of staff, he tried to make peace between David and Avshalom. So he went to the city of Tekoa, and it was a woman that was very smart. They called her Ishaha Hama. And he um, um, explained to her how to uh, play an actorist as she, she, like, she lost the loved one, and she acted like uh, a mourner, and she basically did a play at the front of the king in order for him to comprehend the, uh, the idea of what's going on between him and his son and make peace. Mm -hmm. So in order to strengthen her story, Yoav taught that lady, that very wise lady from Tekoa, um, all the mourners uh, acting, all the mourners period, and one of the things they said, Vayomer Elei Tablina, Velivshina Bigde Evel, Val Dasuchi Shemen Vait Kisha, Zemim Rabim, Mitabel Talmet. So he said that you wearing an laundered garment, which means that um, you, you appear uh, without o uh, putting oil on your body, and, and it's like someone who mourn for a long period over a deceased. So it means you recognize those garments we derive from that of mourners um, um, by not having them um, a normal process of laundering the garments. So we derive from that that that's part of what the ruling, which is not to have laundry at that period. How about leper? And ostracized uh, people. Okay, now number seven. Number seven is a mourner need to tear his garment. Oy, I can tell you that one of my cultural shock in this country is this issue. I came from Israel. In Israel, when you lost a loved one, God forbid, but it happened, you see people take the shirt, cutting it or the suit, cutting it. That's it. That's the way it is. Right? A morning, like, like Jacob did when he felt he lost Joseph, his son, the Torah said, cut his garment, sat in a low bench and mourn. Right? Here, the funeral home presents with a little chachke, mm -hmm. little symbol, and they, they put it there. And, uh, anyway. Because the Torah said to the sons of Aaron, Send Leviticus 10, Lotifromu, Michlal de Hulealma Michaibe. 
So because they said to sons of Aaron, you shall not tear his garment. So again, via negativa, we derive from that that everyone else must tear the garments. I, I noticed always as a matter of education, for example, Jason, when he lost Esther, he insisted to, to tear his garment. Mm -hmm. So uh, you see people who are educated, even a guy like he, this, that is the chair of the English department in Georgetown, um, insisted to do it the way that it should be done. Anyway, menudem how about us aside, left unresolved. Metzora mao bekriyat ashma. Gadavi ufumim, they said in Leviticus 13 that his garment should be torn. Shiyu mekorain shma minar. So the Ritva said, <coughs> wrap it up. A veil mourner is obligated to tear his garment. That's Korea. Metzora, the same. About menude, someone who's ostracized, it's unsolved. Um, the Minchat Chinuch in Siman Kuf Lamed Aleph, 131, if bed, he said that you have to differentiate between a mourner that did a keria, did a torn garment, and a leper. He says, number one, in the mourner, he needs to have a full garment. In other words, you cannot take, the, the, the mourner cannot take already uh, something that torn whatever, like nowadays we have uh, torn jeans, torn, torn, torn things, cannot take a torn garment. He has to have complete garments. Number two, he cannot change. He has to wear that, that period. Versus Metzorah, the Torah said, B'gadav yu purmim. The garments should be uh, torn, so it, you don't have the mitzvah of tearing a new one. It's enough that, that you have a torn garment. That's, that's a big difference. That's Minchat Chinuch. Anyway, number eight. Avil chayav b'chfiyat amita. A mourner is obligated to overturn his bed. Again, as we said, that, uh, uh, this is something that did it in those days. Nowadays they don't do it. There are several explanations. Number one, there are some <coughs> others, like the idolaters, etc., um, that uh, think that we are involved with all kind of um, sorcery, etc. And also there are those who said, Tosfot said in 21, that um, in the time of the Talmud, they have a different bed, very different way that they the mattresses, so you cannot compare the Tanibar Kapara. 15b, Dmut Diokni Natata Bahen Uba Avonotehem Afachtia Kfu Mitotehen Alea. So, in a sense, um, again, this is an anthropomorphic language. It says that God stated, I've uh, placed the likeness of my image within human, as they were created in my image, B'Tselem Elokim, and owning their scenes. I have overturned it, meaning the Ritva explained, and he said, look, God gave us his image. And then, because of the sin, the image uh, changed, they, they, they died. So the, the, the act of dying may appear right away, it may take some time. I can attest over the years in my former congregation, in New Jersey, I have a privilege to talk to the Hebra Kadisha people, the sacred society people. It's beyond amazing uh, what they said. They said that average person, it's about 15 minutes uh, that they see that the change mm -hmm. of their uh, facial appearance mm -hmm. when they die. And according to Kabbalah, which we're not going there now, <laughs> uh, they said that Tzadikim, righteous people, it, it doesn't change, or if you see a couple of hours, etc., etc., they hold that it's an act of um, a righteous person. Again, I'm not there, but I can tell you that um, it's a famous story the Hasidim said about my great great grandfather, the, the Rabbi Limelech of Lijensk. They said that during the Shoah, during the Holocaust, the Nazis uh, desecrated the cemeteries. And they saw the Jewish people go to his grave and pray, etc. So they open his grave, and the officer just noticed that his facial and body appearance was like he just passed. And it was uh, hundreds of years later. So he gets so frightened, they left the cemetery, left it open in the cemetery, and they ran away. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that, again, the person gets the image of God when he is a living. The moment he's no longer among the living, he loses that image of God. You see the facial expression change. 
and that's the, the point here. They try to say that it's like it doesn't happen naturally, it's happened because of a person iniquities, and therefore that's the um, the tvi'ah, that's the key point. And again, it's a matter of period of time. If you talk to Heber Kedishas, they will tell you uh, the difference between average person and the rarely situation takes longer. Menodeo metzora ma'in b'kfeat amita teiku. So we don't solve the other two. Number nine, Avel asu ba'asiyat melacha. A mourner is prohibited from performing work. So why is prohibited from performing work? So it's the idea, midichti ve'afachti ha'chayichem le'evel, they said in the book of Amos, Amos, chapter eight, I make your festivals into mourning. So that's applied both ways. Either to be employed, or to do some commerce. Machag asu b'melacha, afavel asu melacha. The same idea that the festival, we don't do a work, the same way as a mourner is prohibited from performing work, is a book called Yad Shaul. Have a big discussion over that. We do not have the time. Menude ma'u ba'asiyat melacha, amar Rabbi Yosef Tashma. The Gemara said in Ta'anit, page 13, כשאמרו אסור בעשיית מלאכה לא אמרו לה ביום, אבל בלילה מותר וכנת המוצא במדולה ועבד. So we hear differentiate between day and night. So night is okay. מאי לאבה כולו, לא, אשערה. So again, what does that mean, אשערה? Is that applies to other public race rest day or, or what? So basically you don't have a proof from here. It may be that doing מלאכה, doing work is okay, תשמה. מנודה שונה. ושונים לו, נזכר ונזכרים לו, which means he can do work, שמע מינה. So it means that the uh, ostracized person can do work. מצורה מהו בעשיית מלאכה? תיקו. So you see here, so wrapping up, a mourner is prohibited from doing uh, work. מצורה, uh, a leper, it's um, left unsolved, and מנודה, a love. So there is a book by Robert uh, Tkuczynski called Gesher HaChaim, The Bridge of Life, now it's available in English. I highly recommend it to read that book because he elaborated on all those points. Number 10. Number 10. Avel asu berchitza. A mourner is prohibited from bedding. Why? Midechtiv. They said in the book of Samuel, chapter 14, second one. Ve'al tasuchi shemen u'chitza b'chlal sichahi. Over there, it's um, um, one of the instructions they gave her is not not to anoint with oil. So therefore, you derive from that that, that anointing oil and bedding is the same. When they came out with a about a ostracized person, the Rabbi Yosef Tashmak, when they came out with a person, they said, but the head and the head are allowed to be used, and the head and the head are allowed to be used. So here you differentiate, and you see it many times in Halakha, between facial, hand and leg, versus the rest of the body. Good morning. My love, akulu, lo ashara, it's not everything, it's only applied to other first days. Metzora ma'u berchitza teiko. So we understand it clear only in a mourner. But the rest, you don't have any raya, any proof, and any maskana, any conclusion. Number 11. 11. Avel asu b'neilat sandal. A mourner cannot wear a shoes. Midekara rachmana li chezkel. We're not in practical halachot, so we'll talk about the different form of shoes, etc. But because they said in Ezekiel 24, Un So it means that Ezekiel, for you specifically, you can wear. Meaning that via negativa, everyone else cannot wear shoes. How about a precise person? Yosef Tashma. So here, Tosfot asks, what does that mean? Um, a mourners go to, 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 to uh, travel, to distance. And in short, according to most of the Rishonim, applies to a press circumstance that he must do that for all kinds of reasons. So if he needs to do it, so again, we differentiate between travel a long distance versus um, um, in, within his domain. Uh, go out, he wear them, he come to his community, he take it off. So Rabbi Kiva Iger, 
elaborate on that at length. We don't have the time, but he's, he left it Gadol, he left it unsolved. What exactly involved here in Ilata Sandal? What exactly involved and the difference between Avel and others, Rabbi Akiva Igor? Metsuram over Nasadam, take off, left it unsolved. Number 12, Avel Asu Betashmi Shamita, a mourner is prohibited from engaging in sexual relations. Midichti, because they said in the story of King David and Bathsheba, said in the second book of Samuel, chapter 12, Vainachem David Bathsheba, Ishtova Evo Elea. We all, I assume, know the story that um, um, they lost the, the, the baby. So then, Michlal, the Meikara Asu. So you see here, in general, that uh, he, he they, uh, didn't do it. So the big question is, they said about King David that he stood up and he, he when he heard the bad news that he lost his uh, baby boy, he um, um, did shower and everything. So they, it's a big question, why? Uh, some said it was an aninut, it was before the burial. So this is one school of thought. It's another school of thought that said that um, he's a king and he have to appear nicely. Uh, it's a lot of um, uh, avenues to understand, but with the right, another thing is that a mourner can give a, a, a word of consolation, word of comfort to the other mourner. I remember a story about Rabbi Levkovich, who was a great um, sage, Unfortunately, his grandson uh, drowned in the water. So he went to, to the Shiva house, to his son. And he went there and he sat there for a long time and then he left. And then the day after, he came back again. So the son asked, he said, Dad, you did already the mitzvah, you already comforted me. So he said, no, first time was like almost selfish. I lost my grandson, she, he said. I felt I'm comforting myself, in a sense, so I feel I need to comfort you as well. Anyway, how about a person who ostracized in regards to a relations? We all know the story of the spies, and God commanded them to die in the desert, and only the remnant, the children, will uh, enter the land of Israel with Joshua and Caleb. So they are like ostracized in the time of desert, so therefore, um, but you see that they have relation with their wives. Um, there is Gemara in Sanhedrin, page 68, that speaks about Rabbi Yezer when he was ostracized as his son, uncle who's have relations. So in other words, you see here that they um, kill. So maybe the one who ostracized by heaven, it's lenient. So said kill, but you just said that it's uh, stringent. So you can go both ways. Torah said in Leviticus 14 that the leper should be outside of the camp. And he is prohibited from a relation. Why? The Torah used sometimes a euphemism instead of calling a wife. A wife, they use the term of ohel, like a tent. So in a sense, they, um, they use a nice language um, um, to express that. Because they said in the, in the book of Dvarim, Deuteronomy chapter 5, It was right after the revelation, they are prohibited from relation for three days. After the revelation, it was a commandment, tell the people to go back to your tent. Go back to your tent, meaning that now you're allowed to have it. Shmamina, that's the way we derive it. When if shot mine lend no de, a marabuna brother of Christian is made of Yosef, Mitanesh, a sur, she yekem no deva travel. The Mila Hrita, a sur, name of the Tashmishamita. Another one, another important point is Avela no Meshalak Korben or Tav. Good morning. That the mourner is not sending his offering to Beit Amidash, even by a Shaliah, by Emissary, the Tanya of Shimon Omer. They said in Leviticus chapter 3, Shlamim, Bisman Shu Shalem, or Bisman Shu Onen. Meaning only he brings the peace offering when it's the, um, he have a peace in his mind, and at the time that he's in a great sorrow like Aninu. Men de mashri shalach kovar tam, how about ostracized person? Marav Yosef tashma, kol dam shenu shal Yisrael bamidbar menudim ayu, veshilchu korbanotehem. Amar le abayi el mekdim la mudel hashamayim, shane de kil, kil va amar tchamir, sapuk emesab kem ma'ad chilei. Met sora, de les part ma'u shri shalach korbanotav, tashma, I wish to have more time. דתניה, ואחרי תורתו, אחרי הפרשתו, שבעת ימים יספרו לו, אלו שבעת ימי ספירו, ביום בואו לקודש, לחצר הפנימית, לשרת בקודש, להקריב חדתו. 
קטין זו עשירית היפה שלו דברה ביהודה, רב שמעון אומר ובואי הקריא בזמן שראו לביאה, ראו להקרבה בזמן שראו לביאה, ראו להקרבה, ראו להקרבה, hopefully after the davening will elaborate on that. Shulayim, Malachai, Shulayim, Malachai.